Hi everyone, Mr. P here. This is a video that I was planning to record for quite a while, but every time when I was getting myself ready to start recording, a new things came up, uh, a new ideas that I wanted to implement before recording a video, so I was keep delaying and delaying and delaying this video. But finally, this my home lab is been like right now you're gonna about to see for past five months. But anyway, so I think this is a time for me to do a walkthrough of everything what's inside this box, how I'm running everything, what is being hosted and etc. and how everything is connected. So let's open the magic box, which I am calling Galaxy. And I'm calling this Galaxy because all my nodes are named after the galaxies. So I decided just to name all this as a Galaxy. There is obviously, as you can see, the opening door. And you're going any further, this is the um, network box that I ordered about, it's a, more than a year and a half now, and um, it was a good deal on eBay. I paid, I think, £75 for this. It's basically, it's a network rack, 6U, 19 inches, I think, in uh, across. And I ordered that. Oh, and the, by the way, when I was fitting this in, if you're planning to order something like this, the bolts that arrived with this uh, case, this might be different with your purchase, but the bolts that arrived weren't really giving me confidence that all this is going to be um, sturdy hanging on the, on the wall. So instead of using uh, included bolts, I went to a local hardware store and I bought four heavy duty bolts that have been used to um, hang the radiators onto a wall. I said, you know what, if I'm going to go, I'm going to just use the badass bolts that I can find in the local store. So I ordered four of them and they're basically being used to hang this up. So I open the door. The door has a latch on the side. I can open this up. The door takes out and there is like a plastic ring to make a space at the bottom. I'm just going to keep that inside the case. So door, as you can see, is a glass. Okay, it's a lot of fingerprints and it's quite quite good stuff. Um, it keeps some noise inside the box. Obviously it leaks through a, through a corners. Like I said, this been like that for about, I think five months or so. I don't think anything new that I will change apart of just adding a couple of LEDs here to uh, uh, LEDs, the Zigbee LEDs that will be linked to my home assistant that will basically notify me uh, if a couple of like a status of the server uh, or of my cluster of the um, home lab and etc. Straight away I will point the one thing that probably stands straight away. This is the white bit here in the top left hand corner and that is the um, AOTech Z-Way multi-sensor and it has a bunch of stuff. It has um, uh, the uh, tamper sensor, humidity, uh, light sensor, uh, temperature sensor and a bunch of others. I'm using this for two things. Um, I'm using for motion detection so when the door is open, it detects that basically it's open because when the door is closed, it's actually covering the sensor. So sensor just treats all, all the, all the, while the door is closed, it always says that no motion is because the door is blocking the sensor. So I can walk past this box with no problem. Not basically, I won't trigger the motion. It monitors the temperature inside the box. And if it goes above the threshold, there is an exhaust fan here in the middle and the smart plug um, exhaust fan is powered by USB cable. So smart plug turns on and it starts spinning until the temperature drops down. And first, you first thing at the top is my free B-Link Mini S12 Pro N100 CPU mini computers. So each of them are B-Link uh, N100 CPU, four cores, four threads. Pick those because I've done a lot of looking online what is going to be the best one and I wanted the most power efficient mini PC. Before that, I had the Intel 12 Gen i7 1260p Intel NUC. And it, by the way, this NUC is a beast. I, I'm right now using that NUC for my workstation to do my things, to for work and record videos or and render videos, etc. But I was using about 25% of the of the all the all the power that this NUC gives me. And I said, you know, I'm just I'm just not utilizing the NUC enough to keep it running. So I replaced that with three um, B-Link mini PCs. And to be honest, one B-Link mini PC would do a trick, but I wanted to have a Proxmox cluster. So I had to get three of them. All the stars aligned. Uh, Amazon do On Amazon, I found a very good deal on these B-Link. Original RRP of these B-Link mini PC computers is 240 British pounds. I bought each of them with 130 pounds after discount. Plus I had a bunch of Amazon credits. So all, all three of them cost me 200 30, 250 British pounds, almost. I bought two and got one for free, basically. When they arrived, in, inside was one NVMe 512 gigabyte, uh, some brand stock kind of uh, 
um, OEM kind of thing NVMe storage. So I left that to be my, my Proxmox uh, OS. And each of them right now has additional two terabyte SSD, which is linked between all three nodes in Ceph. The Galaxy is because this node is called Hydra, this one is called Draco, and this one is called Setos. When I was planning to name them, I just went on Google and just typed, just give me a list of galaxies. And just picked the one that sounded the badass. The stock RAM that arrives in these B-Link mini PCs, um, 16 gigabytes. Well, they arrived with um, 16, 16, I think, or 8. I can't remember, I'll double check, I'll put on a screen, a, a screen grab. But they arrive with the stock RAM and I wanted to upgrade it straight away to a maximum capacity what this CPU allows, which is 16 gigabytes. But turns out a lot of people successfully upgraded to 32 with no problem. So right now each of these NUC running single, uh, single RAM stick, 32 gigabyte each. Well, two of them. Setos still needs to receive his uh, in the mail. So these three NUCs, uh, these three NUCs, these three mini PCs is my Proxmox cluster, which I'm calling Galaxy. And it uh, contains three galaxies inside. The next U, is the uh, my D-Link DGS1008P switch, eight ports, two PoE, two not PoE, and next on the right there's my free Raspberry Pi fours. The Raspberry Pi, the white one, uh, is my Raspberry Pi which runs Octoprint, and there is two five meter USB Type C cables attached to it, which are, goes off out of the box all around the, my home office into the corner there where is my end of free s1 pro and uh, webcam so one is goes with the webcam and another cable connected to printer and then these two raspberry pi 4s the purple and the black i'm i don't really use them so i just plug them in just to show you that they are here but most of the time they are actually offline one of the project one of the things that i was i was saying that oh i wanted to upgrade but then i decided and then then i stopped preparing for a video i wanted to upgrade do a bit better and then plan for another video to record this kind of video is putting the patch panel. So we bought a patch panel on Amazon. It was quite a good deal, just a standard 24, 24 pin patch panel with the keystones. I can upgrade the keystones. So, and I ordered the, um, the um, 25 centimeter patch panel cables. So right now everything is color coded so I know what cable goes where. So if I go from the left hand side, purple is my workstation. Ouch, I hit the elbow. Purple goes to my workstation. Then we uh, pink, sorry, pink goes to a workstation. Then we have purple, black, and white. Purple, black, and white here. Then we have red, green, and blue. Hydra is red. Draco is green. And Setos is blue. And the yellow one is where my fiber optic comes in. And that's it. And I have, an, I have a shelf, metal shelf ordered from Amazon. The, the shelf itself is weighs a lot. So I thought, you know what? I'm with even with these heavy duty bolts, I'm. I'm a bit afraid to have all this running, plus everything was upstairs, up, up the, on the top of the box. So I said, you know what? I need to do something. I need to, basically, I have a 3D printer. I know how to work with CAD programs. Let's create something. So I found in Thingiverse, uh, on the Thingiverse website, I found a project, uh, a published STL files for rack mounting Raspberry Pi adapters. So I downloaded all the STL files, I loaded them to a CAD program, I modded the, the crap out of these files just to suit my needs. So pretty much all the mini PCs and the Switch plus Raspberry Pis are mounted on the mounting adapters that are 3D printed. Only a couple of things are not 3D printed, let's say if I'll take the nodes that are mounted, is actually metal rod that goes across to actually of them and the bolts at the end. Everything else is 3D printed. So let's say my Raspberry Pi, the purple one, something happened, I need to figure out what's going on. Storage stopped working. So I just unplug the power, uh, they're all PoE, so I unplug the power and just take it out. I have a easy access on the storage if I want to, I can double check. I have a um, space for me to access the screw, take it out, have a quick look, everything is fine. Okay, let's go back in, plug that in and boom, Raspberry Pi starting. Same I can do with all the Proxmox nodes. Obviously, when I was modifying, I went through over irritations of the, uh, of the, of the files that I wasn't happy. So I wanna show you something. So, these, these are all my, as I was saying, these are all my attempts. So we have a different bracket and a slider bit, different color. These are the rack mount ears that goes on a side. So it goes attached just like this. And this is two holes that the rod comes in. What else? There is a, this bit. So this is the um, SSD 
attach SSD mounting um, adapter, a bunch of other stuff. One time I even had an idea to mount, to mount the monitor that I can open and close to get it in. And the monitor that I was planning to use is this one. I think I read it in a video about this. A 12 inch WiMAX portable display. This is the lightest portable screen I have. But even that is too strong or too heavy with all the PLA printing. So I might, I might do that, I might not. What else I can show it to you? There's a lot of things is here. There's a adapters like this that connects to there and it was more like a, like a tray to a, to a wiring across. This is one of the sliding bits that I was using for Intel NUC 12 Gen. A bunch of a bunch of stuff. Like I said, there's a lot, a lot and a lot of things that I printed, 3D printed. And if you do own a 3D printer, I will try to do my best to get all the files that I want, uh, that I used here. Just upload them to a Fingerverse or Printables or something and just be available for you guys to download and 3D print and do the same thing as I, I did here. At the top of the camera, we're not going to see, but I'm going to put a couple of screenshots, is the other bit, which is um, Synology 423 Plus or 432 Plus, 4 bay NAS that has um, 4 terabyte times 4 drives. Then we have Fritz, Big, Fritz Box um, ISP modem. I have Lyra Wi-Fi mesh. And then there is a, a big box, big basically tower of the power of the power that go, everything goes in. And everything is being monitored via smart plugs. So I know how much power all this uses. And I think on the top, where's my phone? I'm using actually my phone to record. I'm gonna give you a, a little screenshot exactly what's happening. So what actually is running in my home lab? So let's go and start from this side. CentOS, note CentOS running home assistant. So automate all my things in the, in the, in the house and monitor the power and I'm about to, well, almost done uh, to set up to monitor my water usage. Then there is a Docker, uh, Ubuntu VM, Ubuntu Server VM running Docker, and I have about 28 Docker containers running. Running. Then there is a VM which is called Network, and Network is containing uh, Tailscale, Pi-hole, Cl uh, Cloudflare Tunnel. So this needs to be always on as I set up this VM to be high availability. This needs to be always on, otherwise uh, I'm not gonna be able to access internet and my DNS, resol DNS resolver will not work and a bunch of other stuff. Then I have VM Chasm. I'm using Chasm to get the stuff uh, tested. Like I read it on a video about Chasm, it's an amazing piece of stuff that you can, you can self-host and I'm using pr primarily for my personal stuff and a bit of for work. And then I have MSZWP, which is WordPress website for my friend. And it is again, high availability to make sure that uh, my friend's website is always running. The middle guy, the Draco, runs Windows 11 VM, just to do a bit of Windows 11 uh, Windows stuff. Then I need to do something and I'm not at my computer. I can remotely connect to the Windows 11 VM using a webtop uh, Docker container and I'm accessing that to do other bits. I have Raspberry Pi Network Boot Alexi container, which is currently is offline because these two Raspberry Pis supposed to be network booted, but I haven't decided yet for what purpose they're gonna, right, what they're gonna do, what they're gonna have to uh, self-host, etc. So that's still in sort of a drawing board. Next thing, I, I'm actually using a cheat sheet just to go over. Devs VM, Devs VM is the uh, virtual machine. I think it's a Mint, Linux Mint or Linux Pop OS. This is a virtual machine created for my developers group, for my work stuff. Then there is a Diapy template and Ubuntu Cloud in template. Just when I need to uh, do a quick test or something, I have a Diapy ready to be cloned and Ubuntu VM ready to be cloned. And Hydra, the node Hydra running. Uh, first of all, I have a Alexi container, Netbird uh, Alexi container. I'm just testing out to see if a um, Netbird VPN will be any any good alternative for Tailscale and when I'm ready and I can see that it is, um, it is a great piece of software, great piece of VPN tunneling setup. I'll do a video about it. Then I have PVE 1, 2 and 3 and they are virtualized Proxmox and these PVE 1, 2 and 3 actually virtualized Proxmox that I'm using for the Proxmox cluster series. So if you watch my video where I gave you a demo and I gave you a, a tutorial how to set up Proxmox cluster and how to set up the Proxmox storage as a local ZFS, NFS or Ceph. These are three nodes that have been used in that, in that video. So when you think about it, the, the N100 CPU mini PC from B-Link running Proxmox and has Proxmox virtualized three times or not even three times, it's five times. 
I can run five Proxmox, virtualized Proxmox on one mini PC with no problem. Yes, it's gonna be a bit slowish, but it's just gonna run chug along, no problem. Then I have PV Spare, which is um, a Proxmox, virtualized Proxmox that is ready to be used for my video where I will give you a uh, tutorial how to, what you need to do if one of the Proxmox nodes dies. So what kind of steps you need to do in what kind of order to make that happen. And then I have PV Sandbox, and this is when I need to do some bits, test it out or record a quick video for you guys about Proxmox self-hosting something. When one node is fine, I don't need to actually go through with the free nodes. So that's it. And yeah, that's it. And all of them, like I said, is a B-Link mini PCs and 100. They all have 512. Um, NVMe and two terabyte of SSD each. The setos running Home Assistant. And just FYI, um, the B-Link, so this model of B-Link, it has two 3.0 USB ports. And I had Z-Wave and Zigbee adapters connected to it. But what turns out that when they're running both next to each other, especially when they connected to device, they were interfering to each other. I was keep getting Z-Wave network not working or Zigbee network not working. But now they moved to a patch panel, which is just USB extension mail to mail cable that goes in into the patch panel connected here. And they're right now running fine. They're even next to each other connected, but they're running fine, no problems at all. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention, uh, this is three HDMI keystones, which is uh, linked to three of the nodes. So if one of the nodes misbehaves, I can bring myself, a, let's say next doc lab doc. I just plug it in here into this using HDMI port and I can see the output of this Hydra, for example. Or if I need setos, I plug into a third one. I still have another five, six, seven, eight keystones at three. I'm planning maybe to do a bit of more extensions or something. And I think that is it. So this is my Galaxy Home Lab. I'm quite happy how it's turned out with all my upgrades. I have the shelf at the bottom, which is upside down right now. Uh, basically it's mounted here to keep the cables not dropping down but I technically, I have another 1U free space, which I'm thinking maybe, I have I had an idea to buy myself the eGPU adapter and I have 1060 Ti hey, uh, graphics card. So to do something, to design 3D print something to shove the HDMI GPU in there in 1U and then link to one of the NUCs on one of their B-Link computers, but neither of them have um, Thunderbolt and I do realize I don't want to go and mess around with PCI adapter plugging in directly into a motherboard. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video will give you some ideas what you can do with your home lab. All this, by the way, home lab is being recreated almost one to one inside the Onshape. I'm using Onshape online browser based CAD software and it's all in there designed from day one. I have version one, two and three. So all the files, I just need to name them correctly. And then once you get that in, you will be able to download every single, every single STL file for you to go and use it. And yeah, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.